Good afternoon, I'm Mike Van Babel from Dynamax and I would like to show you the installation of a sap flow sensor on a corn plant. Uh, this is a SGEX19. This is a typical size that would be used to install on plants. We can also go from 16 up to about 30 millimeters in diameter. So in this part of the introduction I want to show you all the tools that you'll need for the installation and then we'll go through it in stages. So first uh, we have some accessories. Uh, you can see our sap flow uh, data logger here. This is the SAP IP sap flow data logger. Uh, some of the accessories we'll use will be the uh, wire ties, a flexible tape, a silicone grease, a, a mounting putty that we use to exclude water and cutting tools, a uh, wire cutter, and then we typically use some type of caliper and then these are tools that come with the sap flow sensor stretch velcro the o-ring insulation and we also use a food wrap for uh, protecting uh, water as it might aggress from the plant and we'll show how to install that and we always use paper towels and we have the reflector shield itself as part of our installation, we'll show you how water, there's water, is trapped by a Gore-Tex insulation and so it won't penetrate through this new raincoat that we use. The stem diameter uh, to calculate a sapwood area, uh, that, and that's used on the SGEX sensors. So I'll measure here um, it's 17 millimeters, there it's about 15 millimeters. So actually I'm going to use a, um, a 16 millimeter sensor. And by averaging those two readings, or you know, I can, I can get a sapwood area. And that, that's a small part of the energy balance, but it is necessary that we do uh, put that into the formula. I might clean it off a little bit. All right, we're going to take the third leaf off. So one, we're going to clear the third node off because we do want to put the sensor between the second, um, uh, the, the first node and second node. Okay. All right, so that one's going to have to stay because it's slightly grown in. Okay. All right. And those, uh, these leaves will usually die anyway, so they're not really part of the transpiration of the whole plant. This is the SGEX16 sensor, and it comes with some wrappings to hold it in place. These are not used for the installation. So I'll just simply take those off and put those aside. And then I'll take the dowel that's used to keep its uh, shape, and then I'll show you some of the electronics. Uh, let's see, so I'll show you the, uh, um, uh, the upper and bottom part. There are thermocouples above. There's two there, and there's two on the bottom. These uh, both need to be in a very secure position on the plant. So there is a notch here, and I don't want to put it on that notch, that's for sure. I will put it on the flat side of the stem. And then, of course, the heater needs to go all the way around. Uh, grease. That's a small amount of grease. And we put that on the heater strip only. We do not put it on the plant. So all I'm going to do is make sure the stem gauge is prepared so that it uh, won't, won't stick to the plant. And I also would point out that the sensor that the uh, that this is fractions of a, a mill thick. I mean, it's really really thin. So you can wrap it around the stem, and you will seal the stem from Too moisture much coming out. And basically, it's it's going to be one. At least one or two wraps, something like that. Okay. 
okay. All right, so I've got, and then I'm going to tape that. So note that I don't cover this part. If I cover that part, it'll, it'll try to grow a root out of that part of the stem. All right. Okay, so that would be the initial installation. And then the heater strip and the thermal piles will go on this part of the stem. And you, you can see here that, um, let's see, that the thermocouples are going to be on the back side of the stem. And I'm showing you the front side. And you can see that I'm going to tuck the heater strip inside the uh, layer of the cork and electronics. And I'm also not going to crimp this part because if I crimp it, it could damage the heating strip that you can see there. That's the metal strips. Upside and attach it to right around the heater first. So I'm going to attach the heater, make sure it's in good contact. I can go either down or up, doesn't really matter, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it 10 to 20 percent or so. Gives you a little bit of growth rate, so that's 10 percent. All right, and then if I want to, I can keep going or I can fold the uh, loop Velcro back down across the bottom. Uh, let's see, so the bottom part, I do have room to go all the way down, so I'm going to use a longer piece of Velcro. Make sure that the heater's in contact. Very next thing that's uh, being pressed in is the thermal couples, so I'm going to overlap, oh, 50% or so. And then you can see here, I'm, I'm stretching it about that much. Just a feel for that. And then we can go down towards the bottom. Okay, so uh, the sensor's there. I can pull this guy up. It needs to go around roughly about twice and uh, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and wrap that around. Uh, if I have a, a little bit of room I can put a uh, a electrical tie on it or a tie wrap and then I'm going to seal the top and uh, this is going to be loose. The idea is that we uh, need to uh, allow any water that collects on the inside to be able to drain out. However, any water from the outside from rain on the top side, I want to be able to exclude that by tying it around tight around the stem. And uh, let's see, that piece of tape going around so it's above the node and it's tight amongst, against the stem and then occasionally you'll see that there's a gap in here if you're expecting a lot of rain. Um, you can also use the uh, tack and stick which is a putty that we provide with all the sensors and uh, you, can, you can put that in any gaps that are opening at the top where we might, uh, where we put the final layers up. So uh, that's sort of a fine tuning. Um, any moisture inside the sensor will upset the energy balance. And uh, of course we want to, uh, any liquid water that might collect on the outside from condensation will sort of drain off. And uh, uh, then any uh, gaseous water coming out of the stem, which is, might be quite a bit of it, will uh, go out of the uh, cortex. We can exclude that extra heating and uh, so I can wrap the uh, uh, this foam insulating donut around the stem and then I can put another one directly above that. 
I don't want to squeeze it tight. I just like to make sure it's um, that it's secure. All right, so I've got a good segment, and then I will. Uh, so that's the heating. So that will go all the way around, and then I'll squeeze it at the top, and I'll use a larger wire tie to keep it in place. And uh, I believe I probably need the larger wire tie here as well. I'll get my system to hold that part closed. This one's got a little bit more room on it. Okay, go ahead and remove your hand up, and I'll, and I'll just shove it down a little bit. Tuck that down. Okay, so I'm going to tighten it fairly securely. Let me back to rain, that sort of thing. tape uh, is very flexible, it's easy to install, um, and uh, some people use other kinds of tape. Any condensation inside the, inside the uh, aluminum shield will sort of drip down, and then we're ready basically to attach the, the sensor to the SAP IP system or to the Flow32 system. And then what I'll do is I'll apply some uh, G4 grease. This is a silicone insulating compound. So I'll put, uh, oh, let's say half a gram or so in there. And that will exclude any excess moisture uh, that could condensate around the uh, threading. And then I'll take the uh, cable sensor, which is a locking sensor, and I'll need to adjust it so that it first snaps into place, so it snaps in like that, and then I'll twist the locking connector, and the whole thing will uh, close, and then finally you'll feel a snap. Okay, well thank you for attending this uh, video conference and this workshop. Uh, here's how the final sap flow sensor looks on the plant. Uh, we are ready to plug it into the uh, SAP flow logging system such as the SAP IP data logger or the Flow32 data logger. So we hope you uh, enjoy the tips and uh, next we'll uh, introduce you to setting the voltage to the sensor and to be able to uh, show how to start data logging and to be able to collect some good data. Uh, we'll also put the information and this entire presentation has been written up and there are some results on our website. It's called the uh, SAP IP, the transpiration, and you can look under the SAP IP uh, help and support information for more details. So thank you again.